First of all, we would like to uh, thank you to Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office and Invest Hong Kong for organizing this webinar. In addition, we would like to say regret our appreciations, particularly to Surabaya Chamber of Commerce and Industry, who have helped us in organizing the webinar today. This webinar aims to highlight the latest development and initiative on Hong Kong's role as a regional hub for consumer products and hospitality business. The city's competitive edge in the development of the GBA or the Greater Bay Area, as well as the benefits that Hong Kong can offer to Indonesian companies to expand their business footprints and move up to the global and regional su supply and value chains. So without further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Lau Kim Wai, Director General of Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office, to give his, his opening remarks. Mr. Law is the head of the Hong Kong Economic Trade Office, which represents the government of Hong Kong self-administrative regions in matters between Hong Kong and the ASEAN as a whole. The office promotes Hong Kong's economic and trade interests in regions. It also handles matters between Hong Kong and four ASEAN countries, namely Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei Darussalam, and the Philippines. Mr. Ball, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Very nice to see you all today. Um, my heartfelt thanks to Kadeem Surabaya and Invest Hong Kong for supporting today's webinar. So the ASEAN is, without a doubt, a region full of potentials. <laughs> Indonesia being the largest economy and also the most populous country in the region is definitely uh, where the spotlight is on. The ties and connections between the ASEAN and Hong Kong and also between Indonesia and Hong Kong are multifaceted, strong in many, many aspects, including trade and economic relations, professional and cultural exchanges, as well as people-to-people -people ties. Our city, while small in geographical size, is in fact significant in economic relevance. Hong Kong is the 14th largest trading partner of Indonesia and also the fourth largest source of foreign direct investment into the country. Despite all the challenges that we've been facing during the past 18 months or so because of the pandemic, we are confident that there are new opportunities on the path ahead, which will lead to further and closer bilateral cooperation and collaboration. The pandemic is definitely reshaping business and investment parameters compelling many companies and corporations to put more emphasis and focus on ensuring a robust supply and value chain. It has also prompted them to look at new markets and growth segments beyond the conventional ones, and in so doing to take a multilateral and regional perspective. The momentum is obviously in this region. In this regard, the ASEAN, Indonesia, and Hong Kong are more relevant and important than ever. Connectivity and flexibility are the keys. In fact, it's very encouraging to see some major recent developments that are most relevant to both Indonesia and Hong Kong. For example, there are the ASEAN Hong Kong Free Trade Agreement and Investment Agreement, which came into full force last year. With these two agreements, we are talking about facilitated, more direct and easier connections in terms of trade and investment. There is also the Greater Bay Area development. The Greater Bay Area comprises Hong Kong, Macau, and nine neighboring cities in Guangdong province. Huge in economic and population sizes, is a promising high-end market and platform for Indonesian companies to explore business opportunities and expand their business footprints beyond the domestic market here. Today's topics are consumer products and hospitality businesses. In these areas, Hong Kong aptly plays an indispensable connector and facilitator role. Our city is an international logistics, trading, and financial hub. We are well internationally connected. Our business communities are well versed with the mainland Chinese market and also many other developed and developing markets. They have decades of presence and experiences in the Greater Bay Area. Hong Kong is therefore an ideal one-stop shop location for Indonesian businesses to explore all these markets. 
In parallel, we are sparing no effort to continue to strengthen our institution, infrastructure, and software to support businesses and investors in Hong Kong, notably with the enactment of the national security law, which aims to uphold and protect sovereignty and national integrity. Order and certainties have been restored in our city. In fact, the expatriate business communities are as confident as ever about our city's operating environment and prospect. In a nutshell, Hong Kong is a prime choice location for businesses and investors. You are going to hear from our speakers in a few minutes more about this value proposition of Hong Kong and its relevance to Indonesia. I hope you find it useful and I do look forward to seeing deeper, broader business and investment flows from Indonesia to Hong Kong and vice versa. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Law. Now I would like to invite Pa Ali Albandi, the chairman of the Surabaya Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Pa Ali Albandi, the floor is yours, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hilwan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. May peace be upon us all. The Director General of the Hong Kong Economic Trade Office, Mr. Lau Kin Wai, and the speaker of this webinar, Ms. Angelica Leong Cindy Wong, and the panelists, uh, Wen Hu, Mr. Hendy Sotiono, and Adwin Yane. Of course, the moderator, Mr. Hilwan Yogi. My fellow colleagues from the Kadin Surabaya, especially one of the youngest committee that helping with the, this webinar, Mr. Giovanno and the, all the attendees. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all to this webinar because I'm very happy to this webinar due to this COVID situation. We still could be gathered and sharing about how to cope with this pandemic. And this webinar will give us the landscape for consumer product and hospitality business in Indonesia, Hong Kong, and the Greater Bay Area. We have experienced speakers and panelists that expertise in their field. Uh, and of course, the initiation to establish this webinar uh, between Hong Kong Economic Trade and uh, Kadin Surabaya, it is a great idea and as beneficial to us all on uh, in this situation. Uh, Indonesia, especially Surabaya, as the second largest city in Indonesia, should uh, embrace the cooperation with Hong Kong and how we could manage this turmoil. And the warm relationship between the Indonesia and Hong Kong should be strengthened. And on behalf of Surabaya Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I would like to say thank you once again for the committee, the speaker, the panelists, and uh, of course the moderator. And for the friendship between Surabaya and the Hong Kong, we should be working closely uh, now and in the future. To help this kind of communication, even on trade and investment, it is our job to share this current information about the economic development post pandemic and the highlight of the future opportunities post the pandemic should be discussed. I think that's all for all uh, my speech. And last but not least, enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Mr. Hilwan. The floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Ali Fandi. May I now invite Angelica Lung, head of the Consumer Products of Invest Hong Kong, to share with us presentations. Uh, Angelica's current focus is the uh, on facilitating investment from companies in retail, sourcing of toys, cosmetics, jewelry, conferencing, fashions, electronics, appliance, and more recently extending to retail technologies. Angelica, the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Helen. We're just setting up the PowerPoint. Um, very pleased to be here today. Um, so uh, the two presentations from Invest Hong Kong will cover a lot of the opportunities that we see for Indonesian companies uh, looking for a low cost and low risk uh, methodology to explore the Hong Kong market. Uh, so for the first part, we will be covering non-food segments and uh, the business functions we will cover will encompass e-commerce, uh, retail, and sourcing. So a lot of the times when we think about Hong Kong, we are only saying, is it only for the big multinational 
Is it only for the big companies? Are there opportunities uh, for smaller and medium-sized companies? There's definitely uh, such opportunities. And today, uh, let's first talk about what has happened in the retail trends over the last few years. Uh, so these are the latest statistics from 2020. So uh, these show local consumption because in 2020, Hong Kong did not have any overseas visitors. So this is a very good indication of the local uh, population of 7.5 million uh, spend. So if, uh, as you can see, supermarkets and all supermarket related goods, uh, such as personal care, household cleaning, groceries, um, rice, you know, those items have been very popular and uh, the numbers here are in US dollars. So the supermarket sales, we're talking about 7.5 billion US dollars. And if we look at the bread bars, uh, we can see the other breakdowns of uh, some uh, non-food categories and uh, electrical products such as air purifier, water filters, home entertainments has uh, robust sales. Uh, some of the categories such as medicine and cosmetics have a slight drop because those were uh, supported also by the tourism industry. But you can still see even with this drop, we are talking about 5 billion US dollar in retail sales. So e-commerce has become one of the trends uh, that grow a lot during the COVID. So I have two uh, screen captures here from two platforms which serve the Hong Kong market. So these is not cross-border, serving the Hong Kong platform. So the importance of knowing the e-commerce uh, platform as a uh, method for your business to explore the Hong Kong market is many of them are low or zero product listing fee. So they make money by uh, charging a commission uh, on every sale they make. And for uh, companies in Indonesia to get listed on these uh, platforms, you do either need to have your own distributor, your own office or an agent in Hong Kong to list, to assist with some of the logistic matter and to set up the account with uh, these platforms. For uh, other categories such as accessories, fashion, and home goods, I've also listed uh, another two cross-border e-commerce um, uh, platform screen. So that means from a warehouse in Hong Kong, you can uh, service clients from uh, across Asia or even onto the mainland market uh, through different types of cross-border e-commerce platforms. So for the Hong Kong TV mall, I use the search function with Indonesia to see uh, what comes out. So you can see this one, it is a uh, blueberry refining mask. And uh, on the screen, you can see this is uh, like a, uh, they have their own store. So companies with multiple products, you can consider to have your own store on uh, these platforms and list multiple products inside each store. And at the moment we see uh, products with a low or medium price point having uh, more traction in the industry. So for a lot of the platforms, how do they work? Um, it is uh, the merchant will deliver the products to a centralized warehouse. And then many of these uh, merchants will have a centralized warehouse to deliver the last mile to the consumer as long with their entire basket of goods. Um, some other cross-border e-commerce platforms will use the direct uh, B2C model that the merchant is arranging the logistics delivery direct to the consumer. So if you look at the pie chart, um, uh, for these e-commerce platforms, still groceries is a um, big and most popular item, but you can see growth in houseware, household, uh, digital goods, uh, beauty and health, uh, mother and baby, baby types of products. And on the O2O shop, what does it mean? It means that these uh, online platforms are often setting up physical stores to allow the consumer for further browsing or to pick up their e-commerce delivery instead of delivering to home. Uh, because in Hong Kong, sometimes during the day, uh, there is no one at home to receive the parcels. 
So on the physical retail front, what's happening in Hong Kong? What are some new ideas that you can consider? So the first one would be um, vending machines. So vending machine works best if you have small items. Uh, this one is a blind box uh, toy. So basically you, uh, for many of the items, you don't know what you're buying. Uh, the cost of each toy is about uh, 10 US dollar. Uh, this company listed uh, in Hong Kong uh, with a very high valuation. So anything with a vending machine is suitable for some purchase items that you don't need to try or they're small in size, uh, such as cosmetics, toys, umbrellas, uh, things like that. And uh, for the benefit of a vending machine is you don't need to have a full-time sales staff uh, to operate the store. Other options include uh, pop-up stores in major shopping malls. Uh, it's very good for both the landlord and the vendor and the brand to test the market to see what works, uh, what doesn't work. And on the right for a shop line, you can see some previously online only platforms. Also thinking about or setting up uh, smaller stores in the city to encourage experimentation and interaction with the customer. So we have seen overall rents in Hong Kong uh, in uh, dropping. Uh, the, lots of agents tell us that uh, the prices are expected either to be stable or gradually going up again. So if there's interest to enter the Hong Kong market, do make sure you grasp this opportunity of a slightly lower rent period. So the third uh, business function in Hong Kong, of course, is sourcing. Um, so sourcing, the benefits of being in Hong Kong is you can sell to the many international buying offices who are already here. So if you're a supplier of goods, you might want to have a sales office in Hong Kong uh, to reach out to these international buying offices. Uh, of course, Hong Kong is also known for its trade shows, so you may want to um, be in Hong Kong to meet with a lot of visiting buyers. Uh, there's good risk management functions and diversification of suppliers, maybe mainland, maybe across Asia from a base in Hong Kong. And uh, of growing interest is also ESG, environmental, social and governance topics, social responsibility, sustainable sourcing, and of course, uh, in COVID, uh, having a digital supply chain, virtual sampling, virtual materials is um, uh, very important to sourcing companies as well. Uh, so in brief, uh, the setup will have uh, six major steps from registering a business, opening a corporate bank account, uh, having uh, annual audits or having legal support, uh, hiring staff, applying for work visas, and of course, leasing of office, warehouse, and showroom. Uh, once the company is set up, there's various government fundings that the, the company can consider uh, knowing more about. So of course, businesses are, are always interested in the tax rate. So for the first 2 million in profits, uh, it is 8.25% on the profits tax. Um, so uh, the tax in Hong Kong is one of the lowest in the region, uh, but for more details, we do encourage you to talk to our uh, Jakarta office uh, so our colleagues can explain this to you in greater detail. So that's the end of my part. Uh, Hewen, the mic back to you, please. Thank you, Angelica. So I will try to summarize what you have, uh, what you have said and yeah. conveyed to the audience in Bahasa Indonesia. Uh, jadi uh, dari uh, presentasi disampaikan oleh uh, Angelica terkait dengan uh, uh, tren dari uh, retail business. Jadi memang kita melihat Pak di uh, Bapak dan Ibu di uh, di 2020 uh, Hong Kong juga mengalami hal yang sama, uh, kontraksi ekonomi juga tinggi. Saya pikir kita pikir tidak ada yang imun terhadap ada uh, uh, apa namanya kontraksi ekonomi. Tetapi beberapa sektor khususnya di retail yang yang tumbuh eh, sangat baik eh, grupnya sangat sangat tinggi itu ada di e-commerce baik di local maupun di cross borders eh, e-commerce the platform ya kita bicara jadi bahwa eh, banyak eh, banyak dari dari eh, Hong Kong menggunakan eh, eh, menggunakan Hong Kong sebagai platform untuk mereka bisa eh, menyentuh ke pasar di luar Hong Kong 
Dan, dan uh, konsep yang baru ya, uh, new concept atau untuk konsep baru terhadap retail itu pun juga itu pun juga berubah seiring dengan uh, dengan kontraksi ekonomi, kemudian belum adanya uh, turis yang datang ke ke Hong Kong yang selama ini adalah turis adalah uh, adalah tulang punggungnya untuk ekonomi Hong Kong. Jadi perubahan konsep retail sendiri itu ada tiga yang tadi disampaikan. Yang pertama adalah uh, vending machine, yang kedua adalah uh, pop-up store dan online to offline O2O. Jadi memang intinya adalah untuk mengurangi kos kos uh, yang lebih lebih fleksibel kemudian lebih murah untuk uh, untuk me, me, apa namanya me, menyentuh market yang ada. Plus yang ketiga adalah tren ketiga adalah sourcing. Nah, kenapa Hong Kong itu menjadi uh, apa namanya? Uh, hub untuk sourcing. Pertama adalah ter, uh, karena di Hong Kong itu uh, jumlah buyers itu sangat very diverse banyak sekali baik dari Cina maupun dari Eropa maupun dari Eropa yang basisnya ada di Hong Kong karena mereka punya mereka sudah 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 setup company di Hong Kong jadi akan lebih mudah bagi perusahaan-perusahaan yang dari Indonesia itu ketika mereka uh, ketika mereka akan uh, posisi sebagai supplier ketika akan mereka akan bertemu dengan calon buyer itu akan lebih lebih mudah berkomunikasi dan koneksi dengan mereka uh, dan itu yang itu yang menjadi kelebihan Hong Kong selama ini. Terima kasih Pak. So now I turn to Cindy Cindy Wong, the head of tourism and hospitality of Invest Hong Kong. Uh, Cindy's focus is on facilitating investment from companies in food services, food and beverages trading, food tech travel, mice, wellness, and beauty industries globally. Cindy, the floor is yours. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for inviting us you know, to speak in this uh, webinar. After shopping, uh, let's, let's now move on to eating. Okay, um, first of all, when we talk about um, the Greater Bay Area, we have 86 million population. For Hong Kong side, um, we have 7.5 million. And for Hong Kong workforce, uh, we have around 4 million workforce. That means, you know, uh, we eat out a lot. And then uh, you can see from the right hand side, actually, uh, we have more than 16 thousand restaurants in Hong Kong. That means one, uh, one restaurant for every 400 people. And then uh, for the Michelin star restaurant, we have 69. Uh, and also we have 11 out of 50 best restaurants in Asia, uh, which, which, which they are in Hong Kong. So we have a huge demand, you know, um, of uh, restaurant, uh, of ingredients for restaurants. And we have a wide range of you know very high quality and very you know Michelin star rate, rated restaurants in Hong Kong as well. And uh, I will talk about um, the restaurant side first, and then I will go into more details about um, the food trading and the GBA uh, opportunities. First part, uh, Angelica talk about uh, the e-commerce and the e-commerce, the ecosystem, the digital ecosystem actually uh, also benefit a lot of industry and also for uh, restaurants and also for um, a lot of delivery platforms in Hong Kong. Uh, there is an evolving one-stop shop online consumer ecosystem uh, in Hong Kong already. And for uh, new companies come to Hong Kong, no matter you are bringing in restaurants or bringing in new food items or trading companies into Hong Kong, you need to work with these uh, e-commerce already. So no matter they are food panda, delivery rule, lala move, or even some of the uh, travel agents nowadays, they are also go into uh, meal deliveries already. So if you are considering enter Hong Kong, actually you also need to budget uh, some of your expense in doing e-commerce here. And also you need to engage maybe um, with some technical staff who are more familiar with social media and also maybe outsource with some uh, marketing companies. This is not a cost, 
uh, actually it will be an investment, but uh, that will be returned later. Um, Angelica briefly talk about um, the rent drops to a new low already. As you can see from the red and from the gray uh, lines, um, for the shopping mall, uh, uh, most of them you know, dropped almost 40%. And for the high street shops, uh, it drops to half already. Um, but you can see the lines are getting flatter. That means you know, to a certain level, you know, there is a demand uh, for shops. Of a rental, actually, um, there will be um, there won't be uh, any a lot of you no know, new uh, opening of shopping malls, but uh, we can see that a lot of clients they are uh, looking at uh, opening their next shops or restaurants in more like neighborhood area may not be in the traditional CBD or in the traditional shopping area since we don't have tourists. But more in the neighborhood uh, area, you may um, heard of, you know, some areas called TKO, Zhongguan O, to Moon, or uh, even like Dongchong. Uh, these areas are, are on the Kowloon side or in the new territories, and uh, and also what we can see is. Um, there are some companies, especially those um, are from mainland and also from Southeast Asia, like for example Singapore, they monitor the rent very closely. So in the last few months, actually we can see more mainland companies and Singaporean companies are inquiring about coming to Hong Kong at the moment and take advantage of the low rent uh, at this point. So uh, if you have interest to come to Hong Kong, now is the time. Another trend uh, as a focus uh, will be about uh, the takeaway business. Um, because of COVID, I think all of us, uh, all over the world, we uh, order a lot of takeaway uh, business. We dine in less. So um, for restaurants who are looking into coming to Hong Kong, actually, they have to uh, relook at their menu. They have to modify an easier menu items for food, especially for food delivery. But of course, you know, Hong Kong people, we are sophisticated in terms of eating since we have so many Michelin star restaurants in Hong Kong. So um, you cannot compromise on food quality uh, either. Um, and also Hong Kong people, we are also looking at more healthier food and also more sustainable uh, ingredients. So these are the things that you may need to look at. Um, for takeaway business, another angle you can look at will be apart from uh, renting a big restaurant, you can also um, rent a cloud kitchen to minimize the production cost and also investment. There are some cloud kitchen and also share kitchen in Hong Kong, and they can offer you know, uh, delivery you know, platforms so that you can um, hire less staff, hire you know, um, you know, less uh, in-house staff, and also it's less costly to operate. And also, uh, apart from the main brands that you are bringing into Hong Kong, you can also have a different brand name to test out from the cloud kitchen. And also you can open in different district uh, area more quickly than the traditional uh, restaurant method. Small, uh, of course, is the new bank. Um, nowadays, uh, we can see that um, restaurants, they are opening you know, uh, shops, uh, the size will be smaller, can be 200 and 300 square feet. And uh, also uh, the main customers nowadays is mainly to serve the locals. Smaller shops, a good thing will be, um, of course, it's less expensive for entrepreneurs and also for chef owners to test out the new concept. Another angle will be um, to test out the concept and then easier to um, replicate. Uh, for, from, for some of the you know, franchise model uh, from overseas as well. Um, now we go to the Hong Kong market. Um, for Hong Kong, actually we import 95% of uh, food into Hong Kong. We don't have a huge uh, production capacity or a lot of farms. And you can see from this chart, uh, over 75% uh, of uh, imports are coming from meat, vegetables and fruits, uh, seafood 
um, dairy product and eggs. I'm sure in the near future you can, you know, um, uh, produce a lot of, you know, these uh, items uh, for us already. For Hong Kong, uh, you can come to Hong Kong through uh, different models. And uh, for food trading and for restaurant business, uh, very traditionally, uh, maybe you can, you know, come to attend some of the trade fairs in the past uh, and then understand uh, the potential of Hong Kong and or maybe also, you know, in the Greater Bay Area and meet with um, some of the useful contacts and partners. But at this moment, um, there, are one, there, there, there are not many, you know, physical shows, but uh, in the next slide, I will show you, you know, what is coming. Uh, understand the market is the one thing. And then um, when you have done the, uh, the study, if you have decided that you can come to Hong Kong, either by your own or through a distributor. If you set up your own office, normally it can be a marketing office, and then you can sell online as well because of, to make use of the e-commerce or for restaurants, you can just you know rent a space and then hire staff, uh, get the restaurant license. We can help with these, all of these, and set up your own restaurant on your own. Or uh, if you think you know that's a little bit early for your company, then you can also sell through distributor and partners. Uh, and then also you can work with for restaurants. Uh, of course, uh, if you are master franchisee franchise, and then you can work with uh, franchisee in Hong Kong to start with. So uh, all these different models, we can invest Hong Kong, we can explain to you to how to do it and the course, to share you, with you the course involved. All year round uh, for Hong Kong, we have different dining events and exhibitions. And actually for COVID, um, every day uh, we don't have any uh, local cases, you know, for many days already, or we have just single digit um, import cases for Hong Kong at the moment. So since uh, last month in July, we have more fiscal events and trade fairs, you know, uh, happened in Hong Kong already. Like last month, we have the, the, food fair, uh, the, the book fair, the travel expo. And then uh, two weeks ago, uh, we already have the, um, the food expo, the beauty and wellness expo already. Uh, two weeks later in September, uh, there will be the Natural and Organic Asia, uh, which is a F&B trade show, and we are going to have Hall Fest, that is for a restaurant for hospitality business to find uh, partners and also find supplies. So this is ongoing. In October, there will be a new show, it's called Rethink, Sustain it's about sustainability, it's a big uh, hot topic. Uh, for Hong Kong and China at the moment. And then for November, there will be uh, our uh, signature wine and dine festival. Uh, last year, they held it virtually. Uh, this year, most likely will be virtual as well. Uh, but uh, please, uh, will, we will keep you posted. And then uh, we're going to have the uh, Wine and Spirit Fair. Uh, of course, this year, there will be uh, some uh, trade fairs committed already, like for example, the Vin Expo from France, and also uh, the Fruit uh, Expo uh, is called Asia Fruit Logistica, also coming in a, in a Q1. So if you have interest, you know, in coming to Hong Kong or work with a Hong Kong local partner to participate or to talk to the organizer, uh, please let our Jakarta office know, let uh, Hyuan and Andy know so that we can feed you with all this information. GBA, okay, another, you know, three, three letter that we always talk about. GBA is Greater Bay Area. Uh, it com com consists of uh, 9 plus 2, 11 cities, Hong Kong and Macau, I'm sure, you know, you are more familiar with, but, you know, the whole 11 cities actually all come together. You can see, actually, uh, we have updated uh, the population. Last year was 72 million. This year is already 86 million in terms of the population already. And then um, you can see, you know, from the map, um, this area in the future will be 
connector uh, or by high speed train and we call it the one hour uh, life circle. So it will be a highly connected, you know, uh, 86 million people with a lot of disposable income to spend. Well, when we talk about GBA, of course, uh, we need to compare with uh, other uh, Bay Area as well. Uh, you can just look at the G GDP. Uh -huh. When we talk about the potential, the demand, the consumption, GB GDP actually, uh, the GBA will be very close to the New York and the Tokyo Bay already. And uh, one interesting thing is about uh, the GBA, the focus. Actually, the 11 cities, we have different division of labor. Hong Kong, of course, traditionally, it will be the finance center. And uh, Macau side, we will uh, turn it into a more a tourism and entertainment hub. And Shenzhen and Guangzhou will be more the innovation and technology center. And then Dongguan will be the manufacturing base. So very different from other Bay areas. Um, we are very connected. We have different division of labor, so that if your company have interest, you know, to enter this area with 86 million population, uh, there will be full support, a wide range of support of different services that uh, we can support you. So how to leverage the GBA? Uh, I, highl I highlighted, you know, um, a few areas for um, consumer products and also uh, for F&B companies can look into. First of all, uh, is a monetary benefit. Uh, if you have a whole Hong Kong holding company structure, actually uh, there will be a 5% um, withholding tax saving if you use a Hong Kong company to hold your China uh, company. That's one thing. Second um, is about um, the risk manager. Uh, China is very big, it's a huge potential, but sometimes it's too big for a lot of companies. But for GBA and also for Hong Kong, we still have 86 million people and 7.5 million people in Hong Kong for you to test out your concept, no matter it's a retail concept, a pop-up concept, or a recipe. And also for the GBA area, we share a very similar eating habit and culture. So it will be a good uh, you know, risk manager for your company to test the Hong Kong and GBA market before you go further into other parts of China. Um, the other area I want to talk about will be the marketing hub. Hong Kong, we have a free flow of information. You have the full access of uh, Google, Facebook, uh, YouTube here, and you have also the access of the China media like uh, WeChat and uh, Tencent and TikTok here. So um, Hong Kong, we also have a plenty of professional agencies and different marketing channels to help you to understand um, the trends in China. And then you can, you know, um, have your marketing office here or outsource it to a marketing agency, uh, digital marketing agency, so that to understand the trends in China and help you to market your product uh, uh, faster to, the, to, to, to China, different cities. Last but not least, for Hong Kong, it's all about the strategic partner. Uh, we are a world-class financial platform and also we are very well known for our logistic uh, partner so for uh, the financial platform uh, uh, we have the hong kong stock exchange uh, for listing and also we have a very robust uh, banking system where you can find your banking and finance uh, needs being be met and also uh, for the logistic part there are different uh, professional cargo and logistic partners that they can help you with your expansion and also to help you to send your products uh, into different uh, cities in China as well. So a recap of, you know, who is Invest Hong Kong and how we can help you. Um, we are a government department and uh, we provide a free of charge advisory services to companies like yours. And uh, we guide you through from the beginning uh, 
when you are planning uh, for your strategic impl implementation and evaluation uh, of you know study of coming to Hong Kong, and we can also connect you with different chambers, business association, and local contacts, and we advise you on um, the banking side, the work visa side, and how to settle in Hong Kong. And uh, for the setup, um, we can also, you know, advise you on different licensing, IP issues, arrange meetings with uh, service providers and different, you know, government departments if needed. For your launch, uh, we have, you know, um, we, we can work with you, you know, on the press release, on the marketing support. And after you launch in Hong Kong, we won't forget about you. Uh, we also keep contact with you, update you with uh, the government uh, initiatives, ensuring, you know, um, the growth of the company in this region. For Invest Hong Kong, uh, well, we cover, you know, all sectors. Um, we have three clusters, mainly Rebecca and uh, uh, Angelica and I, we are from Lifestyle and the Creative, uh, but also in our cluster, we also have creative industries. Traditionally, uh, we have professional service team, financial service team, family office team, a new team, and also transport and uh, events manufacturing. And also innovation side, uh, we have innovation technology and also ICT teams. So if you have friends, you know, from different sectors or, you know, you're looking into, you know, different sectors, you can also let our colleagues uh, in Chicago know and then they will connect you with the right team. For Invest Hong Kong, uh, we have 31 offices uh, uh, over the world. And uh, if you need assistance, uh, also, you know, well, you're welcome to let us know. So um, this is our contact. Um, if you um, need to contact us, yeah, please feel free, you know, to uh, capture, you know, these contacts and then or you can contact our Jakarta office. So thank you a lot. Thanks a lot. And then uh, we'll see you again at the panel discussion. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, jadi saya coba uh, summarize uh, apa namanya, apa yang sampai oleh Cindy tadi, bahwa di, di uh, industri food businesses kemudian uh, kemudian uh, trading juga itu memang tidak uh, tidak uh, tidak terhindari oleh 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 pandemi kemudian kontraksi juga kemudian tetapi banyak hal-hal yang di di di, uh, di um, mereka lakukan adaptasi terhadap teknolog, teknologi maupun untuk cost efisiensi karena kita lihat juga di Indonesia juga kita merasakan hal yang sama gimana perubahan kita ada beradaptasi terhadap perubahan fokus kepada efisiensi dan 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 bisnis modelnya dan tadi sampai oleh Cindy tadi ada tiga ya ada tiga pertama adalah takeaway bisnis yang sekarang karena ada pembatasan karena ada pembatasan mobilitas orang nggak bisa lagi bukan nggak bisa tapi dibatasi untuk makan di restoran. Jadi sekarang uh, fokus utamanya adalah lebih kepada takeaway bisnis. Yang kedua adalah uh, cloud kitchen. Cloud kitchen uh, tren juga hampir mirip di Indonesia. Kalau kita tahu juga, uh, saya yakin uh, Bapak dan Ibu juga tahu mengenai uh, cloud kitchen trennya seperti apa di Indonesia dan dan di Hong Kong juga trennya sudah 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 berlangsung lebih kurang hampir hampir tiga tahun lebih. Uh, intinya adalah kita bisa meminimasi cost, kemudian tidak harus uh, renting spaces yang cukup besar hanya untuk uh, dapurnya. Jadi memang uh, takeaway bisnis dan uh, cloud kitchen itu sangat-sangat berhubungan uh, terhadap perubahan bisnis model maupun uh, uh, apa namanya cost efisiensi. Dan memang pada intinya adalah uh, gimana perubahan itu tersebut menciptakan namanya fast moving. Ya. Jadi kalau kita bilang uh, bicara fast moving industri terkait dengan industri makanan itu di Hong Kong juga sangat cepat beradaptasi terhadap terhadap perubahan. Nah dan kemudian eh, yang disampaikan oleh eh, Cindy terhadap eh, apa yang bisa dilakukan oleh companies dari Indonesia kalau mereka ingin eh, ingin eh, apa masuk ke pasar Hong Kong. Jadi ada ada tiga tiga model utama yang bisa dilakukan oleh perusahaan. 
jika mereka ingin masuk ke pasar Hongkong. Pertama, mereka bisa serap nih ya, small. Mereka bisa serap small office atau marketing office di di, di Hongkong. Kemudian kedua ada bisa hadir di acara-acara trade fair. Tapi karena saat ini memang sangat terbatas dibandingkan dahulu. Tapi dari mulai bulan Juli lalu itu ada beberapa event yang bisa dilaksanakan secara secara fisikal. Jadi memang tren kedepannya dengan 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 kasus COVID yang terkendali, mudah-mudahan trade fair itu bisa dilakukan secara fisikal ke depannya. Di mana nanti kalau trade fair yang biasa dilakukan di tahun-tahun sebelumnya itu mempertemukan antara antara supplier dengan buyer di trade fair tersebut. Dan ketiga adalah franchise, franchise ataupun melalui distributors. Dan terakhir kita adalah apa namanya kita adalah lembaga pemerintah kita di bawah pemerintah Hong Kong kita mempunyai fungsi dan mandatnya jelas kita kita fungsinya kita untuk membantu company dari overseas khususnya Indonesia kalau mereka ingin serap serap bisnis di di Hong Kong kita kita bantu mereka dari dari awal dari mulai planningnya dan kemudian sampai setup kemudian launch dan up, dan apa namanya dan aftercare jadi memang uh, guidance yang kita berikan proses yang kita kita bantu dari awal semuanya itu adalah free of charge complementary uh, jadi yang kita lakukan adalah membantu companies khususnya dari Indonesia kalau mereka uh, ada rencana atau atau mereka ingin masuk ke ke pasar Hong Kong. Terima kasih Bapak dan Ibu. So now we are in the Q&A sessions. So I would like to introduce you to our panelists. Our panelists include Mr. Wayne Hu, the head of strategy of Sunrate. So Wayne leads the long-term strategy development process and formulate strategic plans for the company. So Wayne holds an MBA from INSEAD and BSc in engineering from the National University of Singapore. Secondly, so we have Pa Hamdi Setiono, the founders and CEO of Baba Rafi Enterprise. So Mr. Hamdi currently have more than 10 businesses from various sectors, such as culinary, beauty, investment, and lifestyles. So he has won various entrepreneurship awards, such as the Earth and Young Entrepreneurs of the Year, winner of Asia's Top Young Entrepreneurs, and many others. Last but not least, we have Mr. Edwin Yani. He's the CEO and the founder of TFG Traveling. And Mr. Edwin focused on the leisure equipment. He started his business in 2012, and today his company has exported to several countries in Southeast Asia. So he has received various awards such as IDX or Indonesia Stock Exchange Incubator Awards, Hit Me Jaya 2019 Awards, GSA Awards 2019, and many others. So we very glad to have uh, to have them for uh, here to share respect perspective on the retail and hospitality business. So my first question goes to Wayne. Uh, Wayne, so. Sunrate is the uh, one of the leading digital cross-border payment provided in, in, in Asia. And your company has supported cross-border e-commerce, uh, general trade, and online tra travel transactions, which is very important to retail and hospitality business across countries. And my first question is, could you tell us about your company, especially in the uh, uh, the advantages to Indonesian retail and hospitality business by using your your services, and secondly, is how your company could bridge uh, for Indonesian companies to enter the Hong Kong and the greater area market. Wayne, floor is yours.
Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm very honored to join the panel discussion and, and give you a, a very short introduction of Sunrix. Actually, Sunrix was started in 2016. It's a China-leading digital platform, which enables SMEs to lower, to lower the cost and generate revenue from the cross-border payments. We actually now we are supporting 100 plus uh, currencies and 130 plus countries already. Uh, we have 10 global licenses, including the Indonesian fund transfer license, including the Hong Kong money, money service operator license, and also in Singapore and in Hong Kong and in, in UK as well. We currently have 150 employees in globally with six offices globally. In 2016, next, next, 2019 and, and 2020, which is uh, three consecutive years, we are the China leading FinTech 50 by KPMG as well. And talking about the compliance, as I mentioned earlier, we got the license from the Bank of Indonesia to, to, to issue the, the fund transfer from the Indonesia domestic to, to the overseas. And then we had the clients and partners, including the Citibank, Barclays, and the China banks, all the global banks, and also in payment institutions and uh, e-commerce platforms, and we support them globally as well. And as a commercial settlement gateway, we help companies to improve the efficiencies and uh, reduce their costs. And how does it work? Actually, from the, the client's perspective, normally the clients will only have the local bank account. But when, when they're talking about to do the cross-border payments, right? Normally they will do the bank transfer from their local banks. What we are doing is to replace their local banks. So they can use their local bank accounts to top up to our standard wallet. And then we can leverage the different like payment clearing systems. For example, we can use the payment institutions, we can use the global bank, or we can even use the card schemes to make the cross-border payments. To all, to all over the world. And then later I will show you three scenarios, three key studies, how we can serve the Indonesian SMEs here. The case study one is, uh, for example, if an Indonesian consumer product business, they want to make a supplier payment cross-border. So the traditional ways, what they can do is they go to the bank's counter and then they, they may enter some forms and then make a cross-border payment transactions, right? It's very inconvenient actually for them to pay at the bank the counters. And the FX cost actually is not transparent. And then the, the hidden cost behind the FX conversion actually is very high. And then for them, for the bank transfer, it's very difficult to pay multiple suppliers. For example, they want to make a one, one batch of the, the payment to like five or 10 suppliers. They need to make five transactions. 10 transactions. And for them, it's very uncertain and slow to make the payment on, on time because if they use the swift message, right, and there are many dots and then it, it will be easy to delay. What we can serve is that we give them a very convenient online operating platform. They can access in their office or even in their homes via a laptop or a desktop. And then they can see their the, FX rate real time will display online and then they can choose the lock FX immediately when they see the rates. So it's more transparent and the cost is, is, is easier to, to manage as well. And we are supporting we are supporting batch distribution through local networks. It means that if you you only need to make a one payment and then you can you can allow us to dis distribute to 10 or more like suppliers simultaneously. And 90% of our transactions can complete within the same day. So it, it, it will help the companies to improve their efficiency as well. And what they, the Indonesian SMEs, they, they only need to do is open an account in the Sunrate platform, and then they need to top up their, their money into the Sunrate, into the Sunrate account. Of course, they may need some like supporting documents to prove the, to prove the, the transactions, right? And then they will give us the instruction and we can help them to pay to, for example, to mainland China or to Hong Kong. And we can pay them to using their like local currency. So for example, when we receive it's IDR, right? We don't need to like convert to, to US dollar. We can directly pay, pay their like 
Chinese like supplier in RMB, or we can pay a Hong Kong supplier in US dollar or in HKT, Hong Kong dollar as well. The second case study is that uh, an Indonesian consumer, consumer product business who want to collect money from overseas. Normally in this case, what the, the Indonesian companies that they, for example, they may have some, they may sell some products um, on the e-commerce platform, for example, Amazon, or they may sell some, some products to overseas in their B2B platform. What they need to do is to collect the money and then convert, convert, the, convert the money and then bring back to the Indonesia all to make, to make the supplier payment as well. In this case, the traditional payment method that uh, for the Indonesian companies, they are very hard to open over, overseas bank accounts because they don't have overseas entities and they are only able to receive US dollar in the normal case. And then they need to convert back to IDR. And normally they, they have to manually update their own system account because normally the system are not linked together. In that rate, what we can help is that first, we will help the client to set up local branch if they need, or we can give them a virtual bank account to collect some money. And we will automatically opti optimize the FX rate for clients. For example, if a client is selling something to Europe, we can, that we can use the Euro change directly to IDR instead of change from Euro to US dollar and then back to IDR. And we also support API direct connection to their ERP system. It's easier for them to manage the, the account. Yeah. So in this case, the source of the trade funds can be from overseas like buyer corporate accounts, can be from an e-commerce platform like Wish, eBay, or Amazon, or can be from a corporate e-wallet or service provider. Yeah. And then the, the money can be like in Singapore dollar, US dollar, Malaysia ringgit or RMB, it's fine for, for that. And what we can help is that we can, we can get the companies to multiple collection account. And then once they collect the money, we will help the, the SME to make the FX conversion automatically, automatically. And then we can help the companies to bring the money back to Indonesia. Either is go back to company's own account or make a, another supplier payment um, within Indonesia or overseas. Yeah, this is the second case study. The third case study is uh, Indonesia travel agencies to make a hotel or flight booking. Uh, in this case, we will introduce our corporate car service. Traditional payment way is like, for example, for those travel agencies, they had to use a, either bank transfer, which is not fast enough to secure an airplane ticket, or they had to use their employees or their owners business uh, no, personal credit cards to book orders, which is a gray area. And it's very hard for them to, to do the manual reconciliations once because you know the, the flight they may cancel, the, 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 the booking for the hotels, they may change the nights, right? So what we can offer is that uh, since we are the principal issuer of the MasterCard, actually we can use the MasterCard network and our clients can, can book the order, for example, book a, a flight ticket or hotel ticket within seconds. It means that they can secure the flight seats or secure hotel nights, the rooms within seconds. It's easier for, for the travel agencies to, to manage their clients, their customers. And as a principal issuer, we can issue the virtual credit cards for the corporate. So the uh, so the actually the, the travel agencies don't need to have the, the physical cards. They can use the virtual cards, and this vir virtual cards can be a one-time card. So one card um, is for one order only. It, it, it's also easier for the reconciliation. So we can streamline the account re re reconciliation. In this case. So travel agencies, for example, they can they may have like many customers, and then they may they may receive many like different uh, foreign currencies, right? For uh, it's the same way we will help them to to do the foreign exchange, and then we will help them to issue the corporate cards. 
uh, it can be virtual, it can be physical, and then we will we will have them to use this like the master card. It's a virtual card or physical card to book the flight ticket, to book the hotel ticket, or even we can book a restaurant restaurant dinner, or we can book the attraction tickets, right? So so that it can be reconciliation easier. It can be it can be real time real time to secure the ticket. Yeah, these are the three three case studies we can help the the Indonesians small and medium SMEs to in this case yeah, from Sanrit. Yeah, this is my part. Uh, yeah, I will go back to to Q1. Thank you, thank you, Wei. So I believe the audience, the audience are very interested to get to know your company and and how they would like to use your services, your product and services to expand the business in overseas. So my second question goes to Pa Pa Hendy. Pa Pa Hendy, so. Barbara is the one of the leading F and B uh, chains in Indonesia, and your company has successfully expanded your operations in several countries, including China, Europe, and Southeast Asia. So, could you please share with us your experience on such achievement, and and what is your what is your pers perspective and advantages for Indonesians hospitality uh, related? business to expand overseas. Why? Why they have to expand overseas? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Pak Hilwan, for the uh, question. I have prepared a short presentation uh, to answer that as well. Allow me to share screen uh, on the uh, presentation itself. Yeah. So my uh, topic will be how to grow your FNB brand globally. So not just uh, to grow uh, nationally in Indonesia, but to bring the FNB brand for mostly the culinary uh, businesses uh, internationally. This is based on uh, our experience in 18 years uh, running an FNB business. Uh, this is a list, uh, a little bit of introduction on the group of uh, brand under Babarafi Enterprise. We are now operating uh, 12 different brands, uh, mostly our, our franchise business and uh, with over 1,500 outlets uh, among these uh, 10 different brands, such as Kebab Turki Babarafi, Container Kebab, and then uh, Nikan, uh, Nyapi, uh, Forestry Coffee, uh, Kekinian, uh, and several other brands that we launched uh, during 2021, such as uh, Nyayap and Menanti. Uh, most of our brand, we uh, synergy and collaborate together with uh, influencers and content creator, uh, famous uh, Indonesian celebrities to, to promote the brand and went viral uh, locally in Indonesia and as well uh, internationally. Until now, we have uh, grown our uh, market into 10 different countries, uh, not just in Indonesia, but uh, outside Indonesia as well, such as Malaysia, uh, Singapore, Philippines, Brunei, uh, and then we also launched in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and the latest one is uh, in India, uh, was uh, December last year. And we received a franchise award from uh, India for uh, one of our category in F&B sector. So hopefully this will be useful for uh, a business owner that want to grow internationally, especially uh, entering the Hong Kong market. Uh, a little bit of outlook uh, during pandemic, especially in 2020 and 2021, that uh, FNB businesses is still uh, basic needs. Uh, it will be uh, still very high demand uh, since uh, it's a basic needs uh, for uh, human needs. So in that case, the opportunity is still there, especially for uh, businesses that implement uh, affordability as well as uh, technology, especially online delivery. And uh, the easiest concept uh, due to the small is the new big. Nowadays, rental uh, and uh, shopping mall will be difficult to run a business. So a uh, smaller concept uh, with a, a bigger uh, business scale will be a win-win solution for nowadays uh, condition. So uh, the condition of business that will be booming uh, during the pandemic era will be business that uh, could be agile adaptive 
uh, with the current condition. So online will be a solution since before pandemic, the transaction was 80 for 20. 80% was uh, offline transaction and 20% only that goes to online. But uh, after pandemic, especially now when PPKM is being uh, uh, regulated in our region, uh, it's a switch 80% through online transaction and only 20% that through the offline transaction. So the agility to go online and uh, having the digitalization as part of the campaign will be a solution for our FNB business that could survive and also uh, grow during this pandemic situation. And then a uh, standalone store will be a solution. Small is the new big where a uh, concept like a RUCO or a uh, small kiosk booth and uh, container will be easier for uh, online transaction to grab. So in that way, if FNB business would like to grow and scale, the concept of uh, takeaway will be a solution during this uh, PPKM era. And then, of course, when we uh, decided to grow uh, global, the one of the uh, key that we could use uh, is a franchising concept. So uh, we need to choose the right franchise brand in order uh, for us to select a brand that could go uh, locally in Indonesia, or we bring our brand uh, into overseas market. In that case, there are three ways, uh, three items that need to be considered, such as brand. Uh, system and support and management. That is the three points that need to be repaired before we want to bring our franchise uh, globally in international market. Then uh, the benefit of uh, doing a franchise system instead of uh, doing your own business expansion overseas will be a faster way in uh, developing your stores. Uh, it will be a stronger brand in terms of business expansion and the efficiency uh, in terms of uh, doing promotion together. But as well, uh, the, uh, the store will be more motivated to uh, do the business itself since it, uh, it involves some investment for uh, every store that being uh, done by a franchisee in the region. But uh, before uh, we want to grow our franchise globally, what are the things that we uh, need to prepare? Uh, these are the main item that uh, us as a, a business owner uh, have to prepare before we bring our brand globally. Uh, mostly are uh, considered with the franchise uh, system, including brand, uh, support system, uh, experience, marketing, and supply of the product itself. Once we have all this item ready, then our brand is ready to go globally. Uh, as well, uh, we have to also develop the organization team of franchise. Uh, then uh, we are ready to uh, go global. We cannot rely on uh, operational team, but we have to uh, build and uh, create a new organization that will focus on a franchise uh, development itself. And then, uh, of course, the team management of franchise and own store should be separated, should be different, because uh, maintaining an international franchise is another homework that we need to focus so the success of our brand will be a higher rate if, if we have a different management team that separates with the operation team that uh, runs uh, their own uh, uh, store outlets. And then this is the division that we need to create. Of course, there's franchise development team, there's supply chain and logistic team, branding and marketing, as well as franchisee relationship. These are several uh, divisions that we need to create for uh, a franchise uh, company. And the most important asset building a franchise is the people itself. So we need to have a, a strong team, a lean management team that able to grow and scale, not just uh, locally, but as well internationally. And uh, a winning strategy to keep sustained for 17 years, our, our business has uh, grown for 17 years, uh, already past four time crisis, and a four times different a trend in the market. Uh, this pandemic of 19 is our uh, fourth crisis that we are facing, and we are blessed, blessed and fortunate that we are able to conquer and uh, adapt with the condition and still growing uh, during this uh, crisis that happens. The key is consistency and focus on the strength itself. So what is uh, our strength? What is our uh, 
we need to discipline and consistent on uh, focusing on our strength and give value on the business uh, itself. So last but not least is of course uh, create a networking uh, in internationally. So the more partner uh, we have, the more possibility we, we are able to grow go global. The key is find the right partner in every country that become our master franchisee. So in that way, we are able to grow our brand internationally. So that's about it from my uh, base experience on bringing a FNB brand globally. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pa Handy. So just my my short questions uh, to Pa Handy. But so so why do you think it's very important for for Indonesian companies to expand overseas uh, instead of the, instead of catering the Indonesian market? What are the what are the advantages uh, for Indonesian companies? So maybe yeah. you, could share, you could share with us from your experience. Yeah, my uh, personal experience is Indonesia is already huge market with over 240 million population. Uh, it's, uh, it's considered a very big market even for overseas brand to grow locally in Indonesia. But once you already uh, become the number one uh, player in the company or in the region, you're already uh, known as top of mind in each uh, product category. It's, it's good to have uh, a business expansion uh, internationally as well to expand your market. Because uh, first, the benefit will be good for branding. Your brand will be uh, known internationally and the trust of the product itself will be good. And we can see such as several brands that are successfully grow, go global, such as Indofood, uh, Sido Muncul, and a lot of uh, small F&B players that already go global. Uh, even uh, a coffee shop called Dua Coffee that runs in uh, Jakarta, in Cipete, now they already open in uh, United States as their international store. That will be a stronger uh, brand presence for the company itself and build trust for the society. Yeah. Thank you, Pak Hendi. So we are hoping that more and more, and more Indonesian uh, brands are reaching out to others' uh, uh, markets. So my third question, uh, I go to the uh, uh, Edwin. Uh, Edwin, uh, your company uh, has sold travel accessories to uh, and products uh, to other Southeast Asian nations like Singapore and Malaysia. Uh, could you please uh, please share with us the, the 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 landscape of the retail business in Indonesia and how how is your strategy to enter the overseas uh, overseas market? Thank you. Man. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Pa Hilwan. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to give a disclaimer because this is only uh, my personal experience in my uh, our industry because it could be different at other industry or other country. So uh, I just want to share about two points today some facts and how to. The first fact, uh, pandemic hit us very, very hard. So 2020 and 2021, uh, financial is really big issue for all entrepreneur and all of us. But uh, actually the one, the, one, the, 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 the one still there because a lot of people work from home, uh, they're bored, they need a uh, distraction, they need to uh, entertain they, themselves. So the buying power, it should, uh, but, but the buying power are weakened. So uh, the solution at um, our category, before, if we need a 100 revenue, we sell two pieces. Now, if we want to sell 100 revenue, we chop it into small pieces. So uh, the, uh, the one still there, the buying power are weakened. So we have to uh, chop it, the price. And about the price, because the pandemic, uh, the middle class uh, getting disappear because, because the pandemic, some people, uh, the, the economy become lower, but some category, they, uh, they get the benefit because of the pandemic. So the low class and high class more and more. 
The fact number two, uh, some uh, there's a company for about forecast forecaster about retail industry. They they predict about the small format is the retail is the future of the retail because the pandemic it comes earlier. Why uh, small format is the future? Because a lot of people they are lazy to uh, find the parking. It's a parking issue. If we have to go to the mall, the mall is too big. People uh, are lazy to walk, especially in Indonesia. And about a uh, coolness factor, we know that uh, some cool cafe and some cool places in Indonesia uh, they just usually stand alone, not in the mall. So. The small front format is the future of the retail. The fact number three, uh, some people think and they, they hope about 2020, okay, maybe maybe it's the, the worst, it's worst year, but they, some people hope that 2021 we're getting better. But uh, in the reality, 2021, it's getting worse and worse. So that's why it's a lot of people shifting from offline to online in 2021, it's more and more and more. So that's why on the e-commerce online market, now in 2021, it's really, really noisy world. So that's why we have to scream, we have to scream louder. How we scream, uh, the solution is about uh, be different, not the best, not the cheapest, not the, the most expensive, but just be different. That's the how we win, uh, on the noisy world. And by the way, uh, now customers have so much power than before because they have uh, so much option on their phone. And how to uh, penetrate into uh, overseas market? In my personal experience, first, we have to find the common ground. Uh, how attend international market, uh, connect, uh, contact, the friend who ever lived abroad or now living abroad and join international community. After that, uh, we have to localize the approach because uh, the competition in Indonesia and Hong Kong for sure is totally different. That's why we have to like, we find to guide, find the guide, guide us to win the competition in the Hong Kong market. Because it's not just simply uh, converting like converting the price because we have to know how uh, Hong Kong people live, how Hong Kong uh, uh, lifestyle. We have to know, so we have to adapt the currency and the price. And uh, in our personal experience, we always start small, very small, because it's really really high risk game. Thank you. I hope it helps. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you for your insightful information about your about your company itself and how how you uh, how you give your 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 plan and execute the plans for overseas uh, market. I think it's very important for the audiences to get to know about the how they would like to expand the market uh, in the near futures. So my next question is to Angelica. Uh, Angelica, you mentioned earlier on your presentations that there are three new concepts in retails, like the uh, vending machines, the pop-up, and the uh, auto or, or online to offline, and the sourcing. So, so what type of companies uh, or Indonesian companies you think that really suits with the, uh, with the concepts uh, or the new business models in, in Hong Kong? Yes, I think uh, uh, brands uh, which have a solid performance in Indonesia uh, who might already reach a maybe medium size um, uh, size of operations with a good local following can consider to come to Hong Kong, especially uh, during COVID. We see uh, strong sales in uh, household products, uh, cleaning agents, uh, 
personal care and beauty, uh, all those uh, in-home expenses items are doing very well. And uh, of course, we've always been uh, thinking about the also high-end luxury goods from Indonesia, uh, maybe in the furniture or uh, designer fashion. Uh, there's always a, a very good market for quality goods in Hong Kong. And if these brands are thinking of expansion, Hong Kong would be a potential first step. So because we have uh, so many local companies in Indonesia, which have, which have unique, unique products and, and services. Uh, so, so, so do you think those uh, Indonesian companies in your, in your opinions, uh, I, I believe you have done your research on, on Indonesian product and services. So do you think that those uh, companies and product, they are able to scale up the business in Hong Kong? Yes, absolutely. I actually wanted to mention uh, both for the food and non-food sector. Actually, the Thailand companies have been uh, very aggressive in uh, exploring the Hong Kong market. Uh, they have uh, some set up uh, uh, Thailand only product stores. And uh, we have one near the, our office and it's uh, been very popular with the Hong Kong people since it's open. There's always a queue to go shopping. Uh, so I think for brands who may not want to come uh, alone to Hong Kong, maybe they can uh, group together uh, to have a maybe Indonesian multi-brand store uh, and to maybe uh, use the uh, pop-ups or e-commerce uh, to test the market. So uh, I, I think there's a, uh, you don't need to bring the whole range of products to Hong Kong, but select a few you think would be suitable for the Hong Kong market. I, I definitely encourage Indonesian companies to explore the Hong Kong market. We are a small market, but the spending power is very high here. Thank you, Angelica. My next question is to Cindy. So you mentioned earlier that the uh, the one of the costs is about the uh, the renting costs mm -hmm. was uh, was a bit. Uh, uh, down in 2020, but it started gradually increase in 2021. So because our, we believe that the uh, renting cost is one of the uh, the cost that that any office company should consider when they want to expand in in Hong Kong. So yeah. could you please share with us the uh, the, uh, the general idea about the cost that they should have considered when they would like to expand in in Hong Kong? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, of course, you know, uh, it depends on the different operation model. There will be different costs involved in the setting up. But for generally, Hong Kong, we always, other, other countries, you know, uh, always have the uh, image that uh, things are very expensive in Hong Kong. Services expensive, housing is expensive, transport is expensive. But actually, setting up an entity in Hong Kong to operate business is only Hong Kong dollar, you require only Hong Kong dollar, one dollar only. Hong Kong, one dollar only as a capital. Uh -huh. Because for restaurant, for a lot of, you know, consumer products trading uh, and for food trading, uh, there's no specific uh, capital, you know, ingestion requirement to enter this business. But of course, if you are in other business, please come to us. Like for example, if you're in travel agency business, there is a uh, specific requirement of half a million Hong Kong uh, pay up capital into companies. So Hong Kong, it depends on the operation model. Uh, to, to, for the company operation, it's just one Hong Kong dollar for the capital. And okay, when you go to the trading side, um, actually um, for Hong Kong, you do not need to rent um, a grade A CBD office in central. Uh, for a lot of food trading companies, actually they will uh, rent uh, industrial area, industrial building, or even you know a warehouse uh, to work as the trading office, which will be only one tenth. Uh, of the course uh, compared to the CBD area. And also there are a lot of co-working space that you can, uh, you know, uh, just rent a desk, you know, randomly so that to minimize the course, especially for COVID, um, a lot of people are working from home nowadays. So the course is one thing that is, uh, I think uh, we are 
changing, you know, in terms of the model. And one more thing is about um, the foreign uh, investment side. And uh, for shareholder, uh, for a Hong Kong company, you do not need to work uh, to include a Hong Kong ID card holder, a Hong Kong local partner as a shareholder. It can be 100% foreign owned. So a Hong Kong entity, a Hong Kong food trading, consumer products, or you know, restaurant, you can uh, set up your entity 100% owned by yourself. So uh, yeah, shareholding and also the cost of setting up of Hong Kong company, you know, these are the things that, okay, we can further explain to companies if uh, you have interest to talk about it later. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Mm. So thank you very much for all the speakers and panelists. So I'm really sure that our audience have benefited much from the vibrant exchange uh, just now. So we uh, uh, just want to remind, summarize what we have uh, discussed in the past uh, one hour. So with the, with the local population of 7.5 7 million, and in addition of 86 million from the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, the uh, Hong Kong's food services and trading companies have a large customer base and 95% of the food is imported and the free trade ports makes it easy for restaurants and trading companies to source new and unique products and services. Uh, and on the other hand, Indonesia have a large pool of uh, unique product and services uh, which, have, which have not been fully explored in overseas market. So Hong Kong can play part to introduce uh, its unique advantages to a global network and to synergies and promoting both economies. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I thank you again for your participation in this webinar. Now we have come to the end of the webinar. So we are indeed enthralled by the tremendous uh, synergies and the potentials in the retail and hospital, uh, hospitality business. And last but not least, so if you have any more questions that we uh, uh, that you have uh, sent to our chat room. So we will make sure that all the questions will be answered uh, as soon as possible. So you don't have to worry about your questions. Uh, we will answer your questions uh, as soon as